Hi guys. Uh, this is the third video or the third session on complex numbers. And from this video on, we are going to get a little bit deep into understanding the complex numbers. The first two videos were about introduction, uh, understanding the imaginary part, understanding what is the meaning of a complex number, how basic operations are done, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication. But from here onwards, that is uh, this third video onwards, we are going to get into a little bit, a little bit technical, not too much, a little technical. And we will realize, or rather, we will see why that understanding is important when you're dealing with complex numbers. So you're going to see something called as an argon plane and the modulus of Z in this particular video. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, a brief slide about me. I'm going to skip this part. Right. So first thing is, what is an argon plane? Right. So it is named after Jean Robert Argan. Now, these uh, were people uh, from various parts of the world in the earlier times. Uh, they were mathematicians, they were also physicists, they were also philosophers. I mean, a lot of people had uh, ventured into a lot of areas. So, one such person who was also a philosopher as well as kind of a mathematician was Jean Robert Argan. Right? So, he came up in 1806 almost 220, 230 years ago, the idea of mapping complex numbers uh, geometrically, just like you do in a normal XY plane. Okay, so the Argon plane is nothing but an, a, a plane like an XY Cartesian plane that you guys know of. But here in this Argon plane, you are going to map or you're going to point a complex number. Okay, so such a plane is called as this argon plane. So we will take a look at how does this plane look like and what do we do in this. So this is typically how an argon plane looks. You can see it is no way different from your normal XY Cartesian coordinate. So there is an X axis and there is a Y axis. However, these are not called X and Y axis. They are called real axis. So the X axis you will be having real numbers. And the y axis, you will be having the imaginary part of the numbers. So you don't call them as x and y axis, you call them as real and imaginary axis. So, what is the importance of this? How do I treat this? So, if you look at, if I want to plot z equal to uh, 2 plus 3i, it means the real part is 2. So, this is your 2. Okay, this is the number 2. And the imaginary part is plus three. This is your plus three, which means your Z is this. This is your Z. This is how you plot your number. So if you take one more example, if I want to plot Z equal to three minus five I. So the real part is three. So I will change my color into, let's say, green. So I'm writing Z equal to three minus five I. So my three is here, negative five, okay, uh, negative five i. So it is negative five on the y-axis, y-axis negative five is here. So the point of intersection of these two, this is your z, which is three minus five i. Clear? So this is how you plot your numbers. And it's not just plotting a number, usually you draw a line like this with an arrow. You draw a line like this with an arrow. Okay, so this is called as uh, the distance between origin and Z. Obviously, right, if you take the distance, if you draw a straight line from one point to another, it is nothing but the distance. So there is a special meaning to this line. This line is also represented as mod Z. Okay, this, this line is also represented as mod Z. Right? Now, why is it mod Z? Simply because in, uh, in maths, basic math, basic geometry, when you learn, modulus of a point X, modulus of a point X or X comma Y 
is a distance of this point from the origin. That is what it means. That is the meaning of modulus. In, in terms of complex numbers also, it is the same. In terms of complex numbers also, it is the same. Right? So if I want to write 3 plus 4i, if I want to draw this 3 plus 4i, 3 is here, plus 4i will be here. So my 3 plus 4i is here. So if you want to find the distance, you draw an arrow like this. Always remember the arrow will be pointing towards the Z. And this distance from point origin to the point Z is called as mod Z. Okay. Similarly, if I, if I want to point another line, let's say I want to point negative 3i, right? And negative 7. Minus 3 minus i7. So negative 3 is here, real number, and negative 7 will be here. So this point will be negative 3, negative i7. So the line will be like this. And this will be called as mod z. It is the distance. Now we know that if this is in the form of x comma y, the distance is given by the distance of a point uh, x comma y from the origin is given by root of x square plus y square. So same thing here, the distance here will be written as root of 3 square plus 4 square, which is root of uh, 16 plus 9, 25, which is 5. In the second case, my distance will become root of 9 plus 49, which is root of 58. Okay, so the distance, the other thing you need to understand about distance, if I take this point Z, so this is my, it's actually called as a vector. It's called as a vector. It's, let's not just call it as a line, it's called as a vector Z. So let's use, let, uh, we don't need to worry about the knowledge of vectors right now. Simply understand that vector Z is nothing but a line starting from zero and pointing towards your Z. That's all. It's a line with an arrow at the end of the line. Okay, so that's all you need to know. Now, this is the x part of it or the real part of it. And this is your imaginary part of it. So using your Pythagoras theorem in this triangle that you are looking at, in this triangle, because your vector represents the hypotenuse, you can say the distance or the length of the vector, the hypotenuse, hypotenuse square is uh, side square plus the other side square, correct? So hypotenuse square is real part square plus the imaginary part square. Now imaginary part without the i in it, without the i. So you can straight away see that 3 square plus 4 square, the same answer that we got. That is how the distance is calculated. So if z is given as a plus ib, then modulus of z is written as a square plus b square under root. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is something called as the argument or angle of Z. What is the argument or angle? It is nothing but the angle made by the X axis or actually it is the real axis and the vector Z in the counterclockwise manner. So let us see what is the meaning of it. If I take this argon plane and if I draw this Z here, so this is my vector of Z. Correct. This is my vector of Z. Now my real axis to this line, this angle, if I call it as theta in the counterclockwise manner, because always angles are measured in counterclockwise manner, basics of coordinate geometry. So this angle is called as the argument. It is the argument or angle of Z. That is what it is called as. So similarly, if I have a point over here. So let me change the color for your understanding. If I have a Z point here, so my vector Z will be like this. Okay. I have to draw a straight line. Okay. So this is my vector Z. Z2. Let's call this Z1 and Z2. So my argument for Z2 will start from here and it will continue till here. Counterclockwise man. Please remember, this is not your answer. You should not take it in the clockwise manner. You should take it in the counterclockwise manner. 
Okay, so this is called as this entire large angle is going to be called as the argument. Argument of z. Okay, so if z is a plus i b, then tan theta, the angle is given by b by a. So let us analyze why is it happening. What is the meaning of this? So if I give you the z, this is your z equal to a plus i b. It means if I extend this and form a triangle. And this is your vector z. Then this length will be your a, and this length will be your b. And this is the angle theta you want. So we know, according to the basics of trigonometry, your tan theta is opposite side by adjacent side. Opposite side is b, adjacent side is a. This is what is mentioned here. So tan theta is b by a. Okay, or Theta will be equal to tan inverse of b by a. Tan inverse of b by a. Okay. Please keep in mind the sine of b and the sine of a matters in finding your tan inverse. Okay. So if I give you a z, where if I give you a z, if this is your z, okay, and if I say this angle is 30 degrees, then 30 is not your answer because 30 is counted in the clockwise manner. You are supposed to have your answer in the counterclockwise manner. Which means your total is 360 minus your 30 you take out. The remaining will be 330 degrees. So your answer is 330 degrees here. So the sine of B and A tells you what is the correct angle. Okay, how much should it be? So very clearly, uh, according to the basics of your quadrants, quadrant one, it means your real number and imaginary number. So that is your B and A, both A and B, both are positive. In your second quadrant, your A is negative, but your B is positive. Okay, it's for A, A comma B. For your third quadrant, everything is negative. Both A and B are negative. And for your fourth quadrant, your A is positive and your B is negative. So if I have a number where I'm looking at tan inverse of minus 2 by 3. Now, if I'm getting minus 2 as my B and 3 as my A, so I'm looking at positive and negative. Positive and negative, basically it means the Z will be coming in this fourth quadrant. So somewhere like this it will be. Now, how much will it be? Will it be like this or will it be like this? That depends upon the value of 2 and 3. Okay, so that's how we find the angle or argument of Z. It requires a little bit of knowledge on uh, trigonometry. Okay, so that's what I, I uh, explained here. So the uh, sign of B and A. Uh, will tell you the angle of Z. The next thing we are going to talk about is another way of representing your uh, Z, which is called as the polar representation of Z or the polar coordinates of Z. Okay, so Z is represented in something, a new form, which is called as a polar form. And it is written as Z equal to R into cos theta plus I sine theta. Right, so what does it mean? I'll explain to you. So right now, if I say z equal to r, something called r, we don't know what it is, keep it aside, into cos theta plus i sin theta. Now, cos theta plus i sin theta is also written sometimes as e power i theta. So it's a short way of representing. e power i theta is basically meaning, meaning of this is it is cos theta plus i sin theta. Now, let us understand what is the meaning of this theta, what is the meaning of r. The easiest to understand is theta. So if I have a z here, like this, this is your theta angle. That is easy. Now, what is the meaning of R? R is nothing but the length of your vector. This is your R. So R is mod Z. R is mod Z. So if you know the angle and if you know the length of Z, length of Z or distance, basically mod Z. Okay. So this distance from origin to Z sometimes is also called as length of the vector because remember, Vector, I already told you, is nothing but the straight line. So from 0 to this point z, if I take, that is nothing but the length of the vector also. So I can either call it as length of the vector or I can call it as distance from origin. Basically, it is mod z. So if r, which is the length of the vector, is known, then I can write my answer of z in a new way. And it is basically r into cos theta plus i sine theta. 
Now let us try to understand why is this correct and how is this happening? Okay, so let us say we know only one way of writing, right? What is the one way of writing Z? We know Z is supposed to be A plus IB, which means this is and this is your triangle. This becomes your B and this becomes your A. But now I will apply, I will use the fact that my length of the vector Z is R. So in the triangle that is mentioned there, what is your sine theta? Sine theta is opposite side by hypotenuse. Opposite side is B, hypotenuse is R. So my B will be written as R sine theta. Correct? Similarly, what is my cos theta? My cos theta is uh, adjacent side by hypotenuse. Adjacent side is A by hypotenuse is R. So what is my A? A is R cos theta. Now, if I want to write Z as A plus IB, I can write A as R cos theta plus I into, what is my B? We just saw B is R sin theta. So if I take R common, I will get cos theta plus I sin theta. And you can see this is same as Z equal to A plus IB. It's the same because R cos theta becomes your real part. R sin theta becomes your imaginary part and that is how you get the polar coordinate. So the same A plus IB is written in the polar coordinate form. This form requires you to know what is the value of the vector length R. It, it needs you to know the theta which is the angle part. Okay. Now why is this form important for us? Why do we need to look at this? Because if I see R which is uh, sorry cos theta plus I sin theta it can be written as e power i theta, e power i theta in the exponential form. Okay, the proof for this is not required. Please uh, take this as a given. So cos theta plus i sin theta can be written as e power i theta. Now, when I write a z in this form, my multiplica multiplication becomes very, very easy. So instead of doing a plus ib or a1 plus ib1 into a2 plus ib2, here my multiplication in of z1 and z2 becomes Look, there is an R1 known, there is an R2 known, e power i theta 1 and e power i theta 2 because these are the two z multiplications. So straight away I can get R1, R2 multiplied and I can get the new angle. It is easy for me to understand what is happening. So if I look at this is my z1, if I say this is my z2, my z3 will be somewhat like this. So z3, so this is your R1, this is your R2. So Z3 will be R1 into R2, R1 into R2 and the angle will be the sum of these two angles. So my overall angle should be the sum of the individual two angles. So that is what is going to happen here. This is going to be theta 1 plus theta 2 because exponential form when you have e power something into e power something else, I can add the powers and take out i common. So I will get theta 1 plus theta 2. So it is very easy for me to plot the third resultant angle. If I do it like this, I will have to first multiply these two, get an answer and then start plotting it. It's very, very difficult for me to plot Z1 and Z2 and then Z3 if I do it in the normal form. So in such kind of a cases, polar coordinate form will help you. Okay, it is also called so polar coordinate form or the exponential form. They basically are conversions uh, in this way. All right. So friends, that brings us to the end of uh, the third video. So in the next video, we are going to take up a little bit more about complex numbers, a little more in depth. Uh, but please make sure that you go through the complete basics of argon plane and modulus of Z. Effectively, the meaning of uh, the vector z. If you if you get a good grasp of this, the future videos are going to be easier. Thank you and see you in the next session.